for Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 2 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. At this time, the prime crew for Apollo 11 has boarded the high-speed elevator from inside the A-level in the mobile launcher, which is the second level inside the launcher. This is a high-speed elevator, 600 feet per minute, which will carry them to the 320-foot level, uh, the spacecraft level. Uh, shortly, uh, we'll expect astronauts Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins to come across Swing Arm 9, the Apollo Access Arm, and proceed to the White Room and uh, stand by to board the spacecraft. The third member of the crew, astronaut Edwin Aldrin, who will be the last one to board the spacecraft, will stand by in the elevator, seated in a chair, while his two comrades first board the spacecraft. Once uh, Armstrong, who sits in the left-hand seat, and Collins, who will sit in the right-hand seat uh, during liftoff, are aboard, then Aldrin will be called, and he will uh, take his seat, the middle seat, in the spacecraft. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and the command module pilot, Michael Collins, now proceeding across the swing arm into the small white room that attaches at the spacecraft uh, level. In the meantime, about 100 feet below, we have a technician, a uh, team of technicians working on a leaking valve, which is a part of the ground support equipment, a part of the system that's used to replenish the fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. He is uh, proceeding to tighten a series of bolts around this valve in the hope that this will correct the leak. Once the technicians do depart, the uh, uh, hydrogen will again be flowed through the system to assure that the leak has been corrected. The uh, spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and CMP, the command module pilot, Mike Collins, now standing by in the White Room. T-minus 2 hours, 38 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is launch control. It's Apollo Saturn launch control. T-minus 2 hours, 34 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, now aboard the Apollo 11 spacecraft at the 320-foot level at the pad. We had it logged, uh, having the commander go over the sill into the cabin at 6.54 a.m. Eastern Daylight. Since that time, uh, the commander has now been uh, tied into the system and has checked in over the communication lines. He was wished a good morning by the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, and Armstrong, in return, said it looks like a good morning. In the meantime, 120 feet below him, the technicians continuing to work to tighten bolts around a leaking valve uh, associated with the system that replenishes hydrogen fuel for the third stage. To repeat once again, this is not a problem on the launch vehicle itself, but on the ground support equipment associated with it. T-minus 2 hours, 33 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. T-minus 2 hours, 30 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Right on the hour, the uh, command module pilot, astronaut Michael Collins, who will be sitting on the right-hand side of the spacecraft during liftoff, uh, boarded the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The third member of the crew, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, standing by in the elevator uh, around the corner along the swing arm uh, from the white room and the spacecraft at the 320-foot level. 120 feet below, technicians still working on some bolts that surround a leaking valve that is associated with a system that replenishes the hydrogen fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. Our countdown proceeding at this time, coming up toward the two minute and 30 minute mark, 30 second, the two hour and 30 minute mark in the count. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus two hours, 23 minutes, 46 seconds, and counting. The third member of the Apollo 11 Prime crew now aboard the spacecraft. We had it logged at 7.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time when astronaut Buzz Aldrin boarded the spacecraft. He will sit in the middle seat uh, during liftoff. As lunar module pilot, his normal position uh, would be on the right-hand side. However, due to crew preference, uh, we have uh, the commander, of course, Neil Armstrong, sitting on the left-hand side, the lunar module pilot for the overall flight, Buzz Aldrin, sitting in the middle seat, and the command module pilot, Mike Collins, uh, sitting in the right-hand seat at liftoff. Down below at the 200-foot level, our technicians still hard at work tightening bolts around uh, a valve associated with the system that replenishes the hydrogen fuel for the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This is ground support equipment located on the tower at the pad at the 200-foot level. He continues to work at the 200-foot level as the crew in the white room uh, does the same with the three astronauts aboard. We actually have a fourth astronaut still aboard the spacecraft at this time, astronaut Fred Hayes, who is the backup command module pilot. He is in the lower equipment bay of the spacecraft, giving a helping hand to the three prime crewmen as they uh, start to perform some of their preliminary checks here as we uh, head down over the final uh, two hours, uh, two and a half hours of the countdown. We're at T-minus 2 hours, 22 minutes, 11 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 2 hour, 21 minute mark in our countdown, and we are proceeding at this time. At the 320-foot level, all three astronauts now aboard the spacecraft. Just a few minutes ago, astronaut Buzz Aldrin came in and took the center seat to join uh, Neil Armstrong on the left and Mike Collins on the right. These are the positions they will fly at liftoff. Uh, during the process of getting the astronauts checked into the spacecraft, communication cables must be attached to their suits. They also have to hook into the suit circuit system of the spacecraft that brings oxygen into their suits. They are helped by a fourth astronaut on board, the backup command module pilot, astronaut Fred Hayes, who's in the lower equipment bay, and one of the suit technicians who's located behind them to give a hand as they check in. We've heard from Neil Armstrong, and now we've also heard from Mike Collins on comm checks, and we're standing by for further reports as the checkout continues. 120 feet down, the work continues on a leaky valve at the 200-foot level. Uh, this is ground support equipment. The technician still hard at work tightening bolts around that valve at this time. Two hours, 19 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 2 hours, 10 minutes, 35 seconds, and counting. At the 320-foot level, the fourth astronaut aboard the spacecraft regretfully leaves at this time. Astronaut Fred Hayes is about to come out after giving the three prime crewmen a hand in their preliminary checkouts aboard. Fred Hayes will be coming out shortly. In the meantime, 120 feet below where we had that problem with a leaky valve, the technicians have completed their work and they are in the process now of departing from the launch pad. In a short while, we'll start flowing hydrogen again back uh, through the general replenishing system to, to uh, continue to top off the supply of the hydrogen fuel in the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, has completed a series of checks uh, called the board advisory system checks. This is where certain key crewmen on the ground, members of the launch team, can uh, send signals uh, to the spacecraft commander in the spacecraft, light cues that would indicate uh, difficulty during the flight in which he could take aboard action if he uh, de determined that such action was necessary. These checks have been completed, and Neil Armstrong confirmed that the lights came on 
in the console in front of him, the panel in front of him, as uh, these lights were uh, operated from the ground here in the launch control center. All still going well with our count. Uh, we will stand by as we uh, again uh, bring hydrogen back to the third stage. You will see how that operates. We're now at T-minus two hours, nine minutes, four seconds and counting. And this is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, seven minutes and counting. At this time, we're just in the process of closing the hatch on the Apollo 11 spacecraft. Uh, several of the closeout crew shook hands with the astronauts and then proceeded to close the hatch on direction from the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin. We had it logged as the hatch being closed and tightened, uh, still being tightened right at this time, which is 25 minutes past the hour. Once the hatch is closed, uh, we will start a cabin purge to condition uh, the cabin inside. The three astronauts, of course, are on pure oxygen in their spacesuits on the suit circuit. We will uh, produce a cabin atmosphere in the spacecraft of a 60-40 combination, 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen. This is the atmosphere used uh, for liftoff. Once that is accomplished, the closeout crew will be ready to put the boost protective cover uh, on the hatch and continue with their closeout. The hatch are being closed at this time. We are proceeding. We'll stand by to see uh, uh, how our hydrogen condition is as far as replenishing the hydrogen fuel supply with the third stage of the Saturn V. Two hours, five minutes, 50 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're at T-minus two hours, 55 seconds and counting. We're approaching the two-hour mark in our countdown, and we appear to be proceeding satisfactorily at this time. The crew aboard the spacecraft, the 320-foot level, the hatch is closed, and we're beginning to purge the ca cabin to bring it to the uh, proper atmosphere for launch, which is a combination of oxygen and nitrogen, 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen atmosphere. Of course, the astronauts themselves are breathing pure oxygen through their spacesuits. Coming up shortly will be another key test in which both the uh, launch crew for the, the launch vehicle crew and the spacecraft team uh, combined together with uh, the commander, Neil Armstrong, to make a thorough check of the emergency detection system. This is the system that will signal the astronauts in the cabin if anything goes wrong below them. We use the ground-based computer to accomplish this test. It's rather lengthy as these tests go uh, using a computer. It will take some 30 minutes. Neil Armstrong will be no doing most of the work in the spacecraft, responding as different cue lights uh, signifying different uh, difficulties are presented to him. The abort uh, panel, of course, is across from the commander on the left-hand side, the left front of the spacecraft. Our countdown continuing, T-minus one hour, 59 minutes, 34 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus one hour, 50 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. We're proceeding with the countdown for the Apollo 11 mission at this time, and it's going satisfactorily. At this point, the spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, in the process of uh, working the emergency detection system test. This is a check of the emergency detection system, uh, working with the launch crew here in the firing room and also the spacecraft team in the uh, control rooms back at the Manned Spacecraft Operations Building here at the Kennedy Space Center. All going well with these tests at the present time. We're flowing hydrogen back into the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle after having difficulty with that leaking valve. It appears that we are bypassing the use of the valve directly in loading the hydrogen aboard, but we are getting the hydrogen back in to replenish the supply. All appears to be going well at this time. Weather is go. We're coming up on one hour and 50 minutes. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. T minus one hour, 40 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. The countdown is still proceeding very satisfactory at this time as we lead up toward our planned liftoff time of 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, continuing this extensive series of ch checks with, of the emergency detection system, working with both the launch vehicle test crew and the spacecraft crew. This is a key test and a very thorough test to assure ourselves before we commit to liftoff that all the emergency detection uh, techniques inside the launch vehicle uh, are operating properly here on the ground, so if required in flight, the spacecraft commander and, of course, the two fellow astronauts could be signaled of a difficulty inside the rocket and could take proper abort action as required. Thus far, the three astronauts aboard the spacecraft have just been giving business-like responses back to the uh, directions and checks, working with the spacecraft conductor, Skip Chauvin, as he runs down his procedures as the countdown continues. For T minus one hour, 39 minutes, 46 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus one hour, 30 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. All elements are go with the countdown at this time. The countdown aimed toward landing two astronauts on the moon. At this time, the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, going through some checks with astronaut Mike Collins aboard the spacecraft. We're winding up this important emergency detection system test that Neil Armstrong has been participating in. Meanwhile, at the 320-foot level, the closeout crew now placing the boost protective cover uh, over the hatch now that we have completed the cabin purge and have the proper environment inside the cabin. We have also performed leak checks to assure ourselves that the cabin atmosphere is valid. This boots protective cover is used during the early phases of the powered flight and is jettisoned with the escape tower shortly after second stage ignition. Here in the firing room, the launch vehicle test team is still keeping a close eye on the status of the propellants aboard the Saturn V launch vehicle. We're back to 100% supply with the liquid hydrogen fuel in the third stage. This problem with the leaking valve is uh, no problem at this time. We've actually bypassed the valve, but we uh, are maintaining our hydrogen supply aboard the vehicle. Uh, all aspects go. The weather is very satisfactory for launch this morning. A thin cloud cover about 15,000 feet. Temperature at launch time expected to be about 85 degrees. T minus one hour, 29 minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus one hour, 20 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. All still go with the countdown for Apollo 11 at this time. At this point in the countdown, spacecraft commander Neil Armstrong uh, once again appears to be the busiest worker in the spacecraft as he's performing a series of alignment checks associated with the guidance system in the spacecraft. He's working these checks with the spacecraft test conductor as the spacecraft test conductor reads off the various procedures and Armstrong responds to them. The astronauts aboard the spacecraft also were informed by the spacecraft conductor a short while ago that the launch vehicle is go at this time. The Hydrogen problem uh, that we did encounter earlier has been solved. That's real good news, said Armstrong, and then he went back to work shortly thereafter. We're now coming up on the one hour, 20 minute mark in the countdown. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
Mr. Paulo sat in launch control. T minus one hour, 11 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. The countdown for Apollo 11 still going very satisfactorily at this time. In most cases, we're a matter of uh, five or ten minutes ahead of the countdown procedures. The crew in the white room at the 320-foot level who have been aiding the astronauts up to this time are just in the process of finishing up their work. They've been advised by the spacecraft test conductor that they'll probably be able to move out in about three minutes or so. Once this is accomplished, once the closeout crew does the part, we'll be ready to uh, move that swing arm back, swing arm nine. It will be moved 12 degrees away from the spacecraft hatch. This is about five feet away from the hatch. Once this is accomplished, we will arm the pyrotechnic systems in the spacecraft so the in, in the event of a possible, possible catastrophic condition below them with the launch vehicle, while still on the pad, the astronauts could fire that escape rocket and separate uh, from uh, the rocket in difficulty. The crew, uh, closeout crew about to depart at this time. That swing arm remains about 12 degrees away from the spacecraft hatch, as mentioned, five feet or so, until a five-minute mark in the count when it's fully retracted to its fallback position. The obvious reason here is in the event we do have to get the astronauts out in a hurry, the swing arm is in a standby position and can be moved rapidly back to the hatch, uh, to the hatch level, so the astronauts could depart uh, in the event of an, uh, an emergency. We're coming up on T-minus one hour, ten minutes, and 20 seconds. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Launch Control at one hour, seven minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Countdown still proceeding satisfactorily. For those uh, People who would like to synchronize their watches in relation to the count will synchronize on 26 minutes past the hour, which is now about uh, 65 seconds away. We'll count down the last five seconds to 26 minutes past the hour. We're now one minute away from 26 minutes past the hour. In the meantime, we do have uh, information from the civil defense uh, agencies in the area. The estimate is more than a million persons are in the immediate area in Brevard County uh, to watch the launch. Now 40 seconds away from 26 minutes past the hour. Civil Defense Agency reports further that uh, there is extensive heavy traffic, a number of traffic jams, particularly in the area of Titusville, uh, near US-1 and Route 50. Countdown still progressing satisfactorily, 15 seconds away from 26 minutes. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. 8.26 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We're now one hour, five minutes, 55 seconds and counting as uh, it was announced at that point. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 61 minutes and counting. T-minus 61 minutes on the Apollo 11 countdown, and all elements are go at this time. Astronaut Neil Armstrong has just completed a series of checks on that big service propulsion system engine that sits below him in the stack. We want to assure ourselves before liftoff that that engine can respond to commands from inside the spacecraft. As Neil Armstrong moved his rotational hand controller, we assured ourselves that the engine did respond by swiveling or gimbling. This, is, of course, is 
uh, important for maneuvers uh, in space. The countdown is still proceeding very satisfactorily, other than two minor problems uh, since we picked up the count at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time last night. All has gone well. As we approach the one-hour mark now in the count, a series of radio frequency and telemetry checks will be in progress uh, with the launch vehicle. We'll also check out the tracking beacons in the uh, instrument unit uh, that travels uh, as a guidance system for the Saturn V during the power phase of flight. Now 59 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 56-minute mark in our countdown. We're still proceeding in an excellent manner at this time. All elements reporting in that all systems continuing to look good at this point. We're still aiming toward our planned liftoff at the start of the lunar window, 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight. A short while ago, in fact, uh, the space conduct, uh, spacecraft test conductor skipped... We were doing quite well, in fact, some 15 minutes ahead on some aspects of the preparation spacecraft-wise. I'm strongly replied that was fine, just as long as we don't launch 15 minutes early, obviously referring to the start of the window. The countdown is still going well, T-minus 55 minutes, 10 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Apollo Saturn launch control. We've passed the 51 minute mark in our countdown. We're now T minus 50 minutes, 51 seconds, and counting. Apollo 11 countdown is still go at this time. All elements reporting ready at this point in the countdown. The spacecraft uh, correction the test supervisor, Bill Schick, has advised all hands here in the control center and uh, the spacecraft checkout people. Then in about 30 seconds, that big swing arm that has been attached to the spacecraft up to now will be moved back to a park position some five feet away from the spacecraft. We alert the astronauts because there is a little jolt when the swing arm is moved away. It will remain in that position some five feet away from the spacecraft until the five minute mark in the count when it's completely pulled back to its retracted position. It's coming up now in five seconds. The swing arm will come back. Mark. The swing arm now coming back from the spacecraft. Countdown proceeding satisfactorily. We've completed our telemetry checks with the launch vehicle. And at this point, with the swing arm back, we arm the pyrotechnics so that escape tower atop the astronauts, atop their spacecraft, could be used if a catastrophic condition was going to occur under them with the launch vehicle from this point on down in the countdown. We have the high-speed elevator located at the 320-foot level in the event the astronauts have to get out in a hurry. This is a special precaution. Uh, one of the members of the support team for Apollo 11, astronaut Bill Pogue, is here in the firing room. He acts as a capsule communicator during the countdown. He's called Sinus Stoney. He controls that elevator. He now has it locked at the 320-foot level. These are special precautions for safety purposes during the final phase of the count. Now coming up on the 49-minute mark in the countdown, this is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the 46-minute mark in our countdown. T minus 45 minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. All elements still go in the countdown at this time. The hard worker in the spacecraft at this point in the countdown, astronaut Buzz Aldrin in the middle seat, 
has been uh, working with the spacecraft test conductor on setting up proper switch settings in preparation for pressurizing their reaction control system. These are these uh, big thrusters on the side of the service module. There's actually 16 of them in four quadrants around the service module. They are used for maneuvers in space. We pressurize that system before liftoff. Uh, that uh, particular operation will be coming up in some five minutes or so. In preparation for it, Buzz Aldrin, who has most of the switches uh, in front of him, has been uh, preparing uh, for that particular event. The launch vehicle people keeping an eye on the status of the various propellants aboard the Saturn V launch vehicle. Just at liftoff, uh, we will have a vehicle weighing close to six and a half million pounds on the launch pad. There's more than a million gallons of uh, propellants aboard the three stages of Saturn V. The reports here in the control center are the propellants are stable. We did take a look a little while ago at the RP-1, the high-grade high kerosene fuel that's used in the first stage of the Saturn V to make sure it was at its proper level. We keep an eye on these various aspects uh, throughout the count and use the aid of computers uh, to keep an overall look on general status. For now, at T-minus 44 minutes, 21 seconds and counting, this is Kennedy Launch Control. Apollo Saturn launch control. We passed the 41 minute mark in our count. T minus 40 minutes, 53 seconds, and counting. We are continuing, and we are continuing very excellently at this time. There are no problems that have been reported in as the countdown uh, continues to click down. We're still aiming for the start of our window on this, the first flight to land men on the moon. Uh, we're aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 9.32 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Coming up shortly will be a key test here in the firing room as far as the launch vehicle people are concerned. It's a, some final checks of the destruct system aboard the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. In the event uh, during powered flight that the vehicle strayed rather violently off course, uh, the range safety officer could take action to destroy the vehicle. This obviously would occur after the astronauts were separated by their escape tower from the faulty vehicle. We make a check of the destruct system to assure that if a signal is required to get through, that in fact it will. This is what is coming up here in the control center at this time. All aspects of the mission still go. We're at T minus 39 minutes, 47 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We pass the 36 minute mark in our countdown. T minus 35 minutes, 48 seconds, and counting. We've completed those range safety command checks, all still going well with the countdown. A short while ago, a spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin asked uh, Neil Armstrong if the crew was comfortable up there. And uh, Neil reported back, he said, it's, we're very comfortable, it's very nice this morning. For a status report, we'll now switch to Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Mission Control. Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth's team is on station here in the Mission Operations Control Room, ready to assume the control of this flight at tower clearance. There is a possibility that Apollo 11 will check out the command module color TV camera during the first Earth revolution while in contact with the Goldstone station. If this checkout does occur, we, we acquire Goldstone at 1 hour 29 minutes elapsed time. We have loss of signal at 1 hour 33 minutes 50 seconds elapsed time. This TV camera checkout is a possibility. This is Mission Control, Houston.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 31-minute mark in our count. The T-minus 30 minutes, 52 seconds and counting, aiming toward our planned liftoff time of 32 minutes past the hour. The start of our launch window on this mission to land men on the moon. The countdown is still proceeding very satisfactorily at this time. We just got by an important test with the launch vehicle, checking out the various batteries in the three stages and instrument unit of the Saturn V. We remain on external power through most of the count to preserve those batteries which must be used during the powered flight. We've just taken a look at them by going internal and then switching back to external again. The batteries all look good. The next time we go internal will be at the 50-second mark with those batteries, and they will remain, of course, on internal power during the flight. The lunar module, which has been rather inactive during these latter phases of the count, also is going on internal power at this time on the two batteries in the ascent stage and the four batteries of the descent stage. For so the next 20 minutes, we'll take a look at some systems in the lunar module, then power down at about the 10-minute mark in the in the count, power down uh, the telemetry to uh, preserve the uh, power of the lens. The lunar module in Apollo 11, of course, when it separates from the command module in lunar orbit, will have the call sign Eagle. The command module call sign, once the two vehicles separate, will be Columbia. Both Columbia and Eagle are go at this time at 29 minutes, 24 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're just past the 26-minute mark in the count. Team on at 25 minutes, 53 seconds, and counting. Still proceeding very satisfactorily. At this time, the spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin working with astronaut Buzz Aldrin in the middle seat, uh, covering the final pressurization of the reaction control system for the spacecraft. These are those uh, big thrusters on the side of the service module that are used for maneuvers in space. Each one of these thrusters is capable of 100 pounds of thrust. There are 16 of them loaded, located in four quadrants around the service module. We pressurize the system with helium uh, prior to launch to make sure that all will be in readiness for use in space. The countdown still proceeding satisfactorily. It picked up uh, at the T-minus nine hour mark at 11 p.m. Eastern Daylight last evening. We just had two comparatively minor problems uh, since that time. The major portion of uh, the countdown uh, during the early morning hours, some five hours of work was taken to load the various propellants aboard the stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. As we came into the count this morning, we did already have the fuel aboard the first stage, but it was necessary to bring the liquid oxygen aboard all three stages and the liquid hydrogen fuel aboard the second and third stages. Uh, close to uh, three-quarters of a million gallons of propellants were loaded during these five hours. Following uh, that, the astronauts, the prime crew, were awakened at 4.15 a.m. Eastern Daylight as planned in their countdown and proceeded to uh, have a physical examination in which they were declared flight ready. They sat down for the normal astronaut fair on launch day as far as breakfast is concerned, orange juice, steak, scrambled eggs, toast, and coffee. The three uh, pilots were joined by two of their colleagues at breakfast, uh, Director of Flight Crew Operations, Deke Slayton, and the backup command module pilot, Bill Anders, who uh, has been named uh, the Executive Secretary of the National Aeronautics and Space Council. The astronauts departed from their crew quarters. Uh, after checking out their suits, they departed from the crew quarters at 6.27 a.m. and some 27 minutes later, eight miles away from the crew quarters at the Kennedy Space Center, atop the launch pad at Complex 39, 6.54 a.m., the commander, astronaut Neil Armstrong, was the first to board the spacecraft. He was uh, followed about five minutes later by Mike Collins, and finally Buzz Aldrin, the man who was sitting in the middle seat during liftoff, was the third astronaut to come aboard. Two minor problems have been encountered during the count. Early in the count, a malfunction light came on here in the control center, indicating that we might have a communication problem at the launch pad. Nothing to do with the spacecraft, 
but it indicated we possibly might not be able to talk to some uh, key technicians we had at the pad. Uh, the problem turned out to be very minor, a simple adjustment of some equipment beneath the pad uh, remedied the problem. There was no, uh, in fact, no equipment problem involved. The second problem, we did encounter a leaky valve in part of the equipment that's used to replenish the hydrogen fuel supply on the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle. A team of technicians were sent out to the launch pad at about the time the astronauts were traveling to the pad. They tightened some bolts and uh, we were able to bypass this valve and uh, proceed with our countdown. The weather is uh, certainly go. It's a beautiful morning for a launch to the moon. We expect a temperature about 85 degrees in the Kennedy Space Center area. The wind's about 10 miles, 10 knots rather, from the southeast. And uh, the weather conditions and the round-the-world track, according to reports from the Manned Space Flight Meteorology Group, indicate all weather conditions are acceptable for launch. That's our general status. We just passed the 22-minute mark in the count. 21 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Apollo Saturn launch control. We're now less than 16 minutes away from the planned liftoff of the Apollo 11 space vehicle. All still going well with the countdown at this time. The astronauts aboard the spacecraft have had a little chance to rest over the last few minutes or so. At least they haven't been uh, busy with procedures with the spacecraft test conductor. In the meantime, we have been uh, performing final checks on the tracking beacons in the instrument unit, which is used as the guidance system during the powered phase of flight. Once we get down to the three minute and 10 second mark in the countdown, we'll go on an automatic sequence. As far as the launch vehicle is concerned, all aspects from there on down will be automatic, run by the ground master computer here in the firing room. This will lead up to the 8.9 minute mark in the countdown when the ignition sequence will begin in those five engines of the first stage, the S1C stage of the Saturn V. At the two-second mark, we'll get uh, information and a signal that all engines are running. And at the zero mark in the countdown, once we get the commit signal, the signal that says that the thrust is proper and acceptable, we then will get a commit and lift off as the hold-down arms release the vehicle. We have some 7.6 million pounds of thrust pushing the vehicle upward, a vehicle that weighs uh, close to 6.5 million pounds. We're now at 14 minutes, 30 seconds and counting, and this is Kennedy Launch Control.
This is Apollo Saturn and Launch Control. We've passed the 11 minute mark. Now, T minus 10 minutes, 54 seconds on our countdown for Apollo 11. All still go at this time. The astronauts in the spacecraft busy again. The Commander Neil Armstrong has uh, performed some final uh, switch settings for the stabilization and control system of the spacecraft. The spacecraft also now is on full internal power. This came shortly after the 15 minute mark spacecraft now in the full power of its fuel cells. Up to this time, it had been sharing the load with an external power source. Both Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin have armed their rotational hand controllers, the controllers they use in flight, and we have now gone to the automatic system with the emergency detection system, that system that would uh, cue the astronauts uh, if there's trouble down below with the Saturn V rocket during the powered flight. We're now coming up on the 10 minute mark, 10 minutes away from our planned liftoff. Mark, T minus 10 minutes and counting, T minus 10. We're aiming for our planned liftoff at 32 minutes past the hour. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
about it. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six-minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11. Now five minutes, 52 seconds and counting. We're on time at the present time for our planned liftoff of 32 minutes past the hour. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now has completed the status check of his personnel in the control room. All report they are go for the mission, and this has been reported to the test supervisor, Bill Schick. The test supervisor are now going through some status checks. Launch operations manager Paul Donner reports go for launch. Launch director Rocco Patron now gives a go with five minutes, 20 seconds in coming. Coming up shortly, that swing arm up at the spacecraft level will come back to its fully retracted position. This should occur at the five minute mark in the count. In the meantime, the lunar module tel telemetry has been powered down. We took a good look at Eagle and it looks good. The spacecraft test conductor for the lunar module reported that Eagle was go. The swing arm now coming back to its fully retracted position as our countdown continues. T-minus four minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Skip Chauvin informing the astronauts that the swing arm now coming back. The astronauts will have a few more reports coming up in the countdown. The last business report will be from Neil Armstrong at the 45 second mark in the count when he gives a status on the final alignment of the stabilization and control system. We're now passing the four minute 30 second mark in the countdown, still go at this time. Four minutes, 15 seconds, the test supervisor now has informed launch vehicle test conductor Norm Carlson, you are go for launch. From this time down, uh, Carlson uh, handles the countdown as the launch vehicle uh, begins to build up. We're now hitting the four minute mark. Four minutes, mark, four minutes and counting. We are go for Apollo 11. We'll go on an automatic sequence uh, starting at three minutes and seven seconds. Three minutes, 45 seconds and counting. And the final uh, abort checks between uh, several key members of the crew here in the control center and the astronauts. Launch operations manager Paul Donnelly wished the crew on the launch team's behalf good luck and Godspeed. Three minutes, 25 seconds and counting. We're still go at this time. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence about just 10 or 15 seconds from this time. All still go at this time. Neil Armstrong reported back when he received the good wishes. Thank you very much. We know it will be a good flight. Firing command coming in now. We are on the automatic sequence. We're approaching the three minute mark in the count. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three, we are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. The members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring a number of what we call red line values. These are tolerances we don't want to go above and below in temperatures and pressures. They're standing by to call out any deviations from our plans. Two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still go on Apollo 11 at this time. The vehicle starting to pressurize as far as the propellant tanks are concerned and all is still go as we monitor our status for it. Two minutes, 10 seconds and counting. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. We just passed the two minute mark in the countdown. T minus one minute, 54 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates that the oxidizer tanks from the second and third stages now have pressurized. We continue to build up pressure in all three stages uh, here at the last minute uh, to prepare it for a liftoff. T minus one minute, 35 seconds on the Apollo mission, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. 
All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this time indicate we are go. One minute, 25 seconds and counting. Our status board indicates the third stage completely pressurized. 80 second mark has now been passed. We'll go on full internal power at the 50 second mark in the countdown. Guidance system goes on internal at 17 seconds, leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60 second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We pass T minus 60. 55 seconds and counting. Neil Armstrong just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50 second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Tower cleared. We've got a roll program. Neil Armstrong reporting the roll and pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Plus 30 seconds. Roll complete and the pitch is programmed. of maximum dynamic pressure now. Set eight miles downrange, 12 miles high. Velocity, 4,000 feet per second. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. I'm Charlie. Cliff Charlesworth taking a staging status. This is Houston. You are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. Inboard engines out. I'm inboard cutoff. Downrange 35 miles, 30 miles high. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. Station. And ignition. Eleven Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. At three minutes, downrange 70 miles, 43 miles high, velocity 9,300 feet per second. We got the first step. Roger, we can 
confirm, sir. Tower's gone. Roger, Tower. Neil Armstrong confirming both the engine skirt separation and the launch escape tower separation. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Yeah, they finally gave me a window to look out. Eleven Houston, uh, your guidance has converged. You're looking good. Downrange 140 miles, altitude 62 miles, velocity 10,300 feet per second. 11 Houston, you are go at four minutes. Gotcha. Hello, 11, right on the ground track. miles down range now, 72 miles high, velocity 11,000 feet per second. says it's looking good at five minutes. Then Houston, you are go at five minutes. Roger, you're all 11, go. Downrange 270 miles, altitude 82 miles, velocity 12,472 feet per second. Slide S4B to COI capability. Okay. Mark, S4B to COI capability. Roger. Apollo 11 could now get into orbit using the S4B if necessary. Oh, thank you. You all are coming through beautifully, too. Houston, level sense arm at 8 plus 17, uh, outboard cutoff at 9 plus 11. Level sense arm is the sequence that uh, arranges the staging between the second stage and the third stage. The fuel uncovers uh, a sensor starting that sequence. Predicting that will be uncovered at 8 minutes 17 seconds with outboard engine cut off 9 minutes 11 seconds on the second stage. Follow 11, go at 7 minutes. 11, this is Houston. Roger, your go from the ground at 7 minutes. Level sense arm at 8 plus 17, outboard cut off at 9 plus 11. Roger. Downrange 530 miles, altitude 95 miles, velocity 17,358 feet per second.
Apollo 11, go on all sources. In your go at eight minutes. As just back to make two racer shifts. Roger, we got PU shift down here too. This is Houston. You are go for staging. Over. Understand. Go for staging. And Stand by for mode four capability. To mode four. Mark mode four capability. Mode four and Apollo eleven could get into orbit using the service propulsion system now. Altitude is one hundred miles. Downrange eight hundred eighty-three miles. Outboard engine cut off. And ignition. Ignition confirmed. Thrust is go, 11. And we have a good third stage now. Velocity 23,128 feet per second. Downrange 1,000 miles, altitude 101 miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston. At 10 minutes, you are go. And Roger, 11, go. Capcom, Bruce McCandless giving the reports here from the control center. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Predicted cutoff at 11 plus 42. Over. 1142, Rich. Downrange 1175 miles. Velocity 24,190 mile feet per second, altitude 102 nautical miles. Apollo 11 still go on all sources. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at 11. We're predicting third stage shutdown at 11 minutes 42 seconds. Velocity 25,254 feet per second. Downrange 1,400 miles now. Altitude uh, 102.8 nautical miles. Shutdown. Shut down right on time. 101.4 by 103.6. Roger, shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. This is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. Are we showing, sir? This is Houston. The booster is safe. All right, Roger. Show velocity at insertion 25,568 feet per second.
Apollo 11, this is Houston. The booster has been configured for orbital coast. Both spacecraft are looking good. Over. Roger. This is Houston Vanguard LOS at uh, 1535, AOS Canaries at uh, 1630, over. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control based on a vector from the instrument unit of the third stage of the Saturn V. Here on the ground we're showing an orbit of 102.5 by 99.7 nautical miles. Uh, the flight dynamics officer Dave Reed wants to uh, get some radar tracking to refine this orbit and he, he will report a uh, refined orbit after more radar tracking. Okay, all flight controllers coming up on auto sequence. Booster, how are you? Where go flight? Econ? Go flight. GNC? Go flight. Telcom? Go flight. Control? Go. Network, you got it, Dale? Got it all? Everything up? That's permanent flight. Okay.
Flight guidance. Let's go. Verb 75 verified. Roger. Auto sequence flight. Roger. Okay, all flight controllers went auto sequence. Stand by. ECS on internal cooler. Roger. B pre press complete flight. Roger. S2 pre press complete flight. Roger. Bats online flight. Roger, Bats. Internal power. Roger, power. S1 pre press. Roger. MC receive recorders to flight speed. GRR, Roger GRR. Clock start flight, Roger. Thrusts go all engines, Roger. Flight fighter, go with the IP. Roger IP. Range safety is nominal. Roger RSO. A flight range safety is off in the water. Roger RSO. Roger. Okay. Kevin, we're leaving. Roger, how you, Booster? We're going to fly. Good at one minute, Captain. Huh? Flight, oh, flight, how are you? Looking good, flight. GNC? Looks good, flight. Ecom? Looking good, flight. Roger. Flight, how are you? 
We're go flight, Sergeant. We're we're go flight. Everything's good. Roger. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark. Staging status booster. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Good for staging, Captain. Confirm in port. Roger. How you eat, Com? We're go flight. GNC? We're go flight. Roger. Cut off. Ignition. Roger. Trajectory verified. Roger. Thrusters go all engines. Looks good, Capcom. Confirm second plane step. Roger. Tower's going, Fido. Fido flight, you copy? Guys, initiate flight. flight. Roger. Let me know when it converges, guidance. Roger. Right. Looks good, flight converge. Steering converge, Captain. Kevin, stable at five nine, flight. Roger, Kevin. Hi, hi, you booster. We're go flight. GNC. We're go flight, Sergeant. Go flight. We're good at four minutes, Captain. Guidance flight, how are you? We're in great shape, Flight, go. Flight, Fido. Go. All trajectory sources agree, we're go. Roger. Lock step press flight. Roger. How you look, booster? Booster flight. Go flight. Oh, look okay. That's a firm flight. Looking good. Econ flight, how are you? We're looking good, flight. Good at five minutes, Captain. Stand by for S4B, the COI capability. Mark. Booster flight, how are you? We're go flight. GNC. We're go flight. Be calm. Go flight. Guidance. Go flight. We're go. Okay. Flight fighter, they all look good. We're go. Roger. So are we. Flight booster. Go. Times eight plus one seven, nine plus one one. Copy eight one seven nine one one. Roger. Gimbal's on. Roger, Gimbal.
Booster flight, how are you? Go flight. Guidance? Go flight. GNC? Go flight. Econ? Go flight. Good as seven minutes, Captain. This is Apollo Control. The Canary Island Station has acquisition of Apollo 11 now. We'll continue to stand by live for any air-to-ground communication. We're showing an orbital weight of the combined vehicles of 297,914 pounds. Contact, Canary Contact. Apollo 11, this is Houston through Canary, over. Uh, Roger, uh, reading your land and clear, their insertion check this is complete, and uh, we have no abnormalities. Uh, Roger, and uh, I'd like to pass up your Delta azimuth correction at this time, if you're ready to copy. Okay, uh, Delta Azimuth correction is plus zero decimal two two. That is plus decimal two two, and we do recommend the P-52 alignment, over. Okay, we'll go ahead with the P-52 and uh, the parking angle plus zero decimal two two. Uh, Roger, and your LOS time at Canary is two three three seven, over. Houston, Roger out. This is Apollo Control. Based on that initial orbital figures, the uh, orbital period is one hour, 28 minutes, 16 seconds. This uh, number will be refined as also as we get better information on the orbit through radar tracking. At the present time, we're showing an orbital period of 1 hour, 28 minutes, 17 seconds. We'll continue to stand by live through the Canaries station. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, one minute to LOS Canary. AOS at Tanana Reef, 3704, in VHS Simplex Alpha, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, coming up on LOS Canary. AOS to Nannery, that's 3704, Simplex Alpha. Houston out. Oh, 
11 Houston, you're good at one minute. Stand by for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. Follow 11, this is Houston. You are go for staging. Inboard cutoff. We confirm inboard cutoff. Eleven Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. All right, Roger, you're loud and clear, Houston. We got skirt step. Roger, we confirm skirt step. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. Houston, be advised the visual is go today. This is Houston, Roger out. Yeah, they finally gave me a window to look out. Eleven Houston, uh, your guidance has converged. You're looking good. Roger. Eleven Houston, you are go at four minutes. Gotcha. Eleven Houston, you are go at five minutes. Roger, you're follow eleven, go. Stand by to S four B to COI capability. Okay. Mark, S four B to COI capability. Roger. Clear down here, Bruce. Sound like you're sitting in your living room. Oh, thank you. You all are coming through beautifully, too. We're going six minutes. Start to get motors. Roger, 11, uh, your go from the ground at six minutes. Follow 11, 
seven. This is Houston. Level sense arm at eight plus one seven. Uh, outboard cutoff at nine plus one one. This is Houston. Roger, your go from the ground at seven minutes. Level sense arm at eight plus one seven. Outboard cut off at nine plus one one. Roger. confirmed. Houston, your go at eight minutes. I've just got the mixture ratio shift. Roger, we got PU shift down here too. This is Houston. You are go for staging. Over. I understand. Go for staging. Stand Absolutely. by for mode four capability. For mode four. Mark mode four capability. Staging and ignition. Ignition confirmed. Thrust is go. Eleven. This is Houston at 10 minutes, you are go. And Roger, let's go. Apollo 11, this is Houston, predicted cutoff at 1 1 plus 4 2, over. 1 1 4 2, Gretch. This is Houston. You are go at 11.
Shut down, and we copy 101.4 by 103.6. This is Apollo Control at 36 minutes. That's the end of the tape. We have a report on the launch uh, heart rates now from the flight surgeon. Commander Neil Armstrong's heart rate 110. Command module pilot. Mike Collins, 99. Lunar Module Pilot Buzz Aldrin, 88. These uh, compare with their their first Gemini flights, their first liftoff. Back in the Gemini program, Armstrong's heart rate was 146 at that time. Collins was 125. Aldrin's was 110. We have acquisition at Tanana Reeve now. We'll stand by live through that station. This is Apollo. Apollo 11, this is Houston through Tanana Reeve. Over. Apollo 11, Apollo 11, this is Houston through Tanana Reeve. Over. Houston, uh, we're reading you uh, loud and fairly clearly. For your information, Canary Radar shows you in a 103.0 by 103.0 orbit. Over. Roger, we concur. Yeah, we're just coming into the terminator. This is Apollo Control, the orbital period at that 103 nautical mile circular orbit is 1 hour 28 minutes 24 seconds. Apollo 11, this is Houston. 1 minute to LOS Tenerife. AOS Carnarvon is at 5215. Over. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 42 minutes 53 seconds. Tanana Reeve has loss of signal. We'll come back up at 52 minutes into the mission when the Carnarvon Australian Station acquires Apollo 11. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 52 minutes, and the station at Carnarvon, Australia, is about to acquire Apollo 11. We'll stand by live through this pass. Apollo 11, this is Houston through Carnarvon, over. Houston, Apollo 11, loud and clear, over. All right, Roger, 11, we're reading you the same. Uh, both the booster and the spacecraft are looking good to us, over. Uh, Houston, Apollo 11, would you like to copy uh, the uh, alignment results? That's affirmative. Okay, now on uh, 71, we use 30 and 37. Four balls, one. Now 93 plus 00016 plus 00033 plus 00152. GET 004815. Check star 34. Over. All right, just say again, check star. Check star three four. Roger, we copy, and uh, the angles look good. And tell Glenn Parker down at the Cape that he lucked out. Understand? Tell Glenn Parker you lucked out. Yeah, he lucked out. He doesn't owe me a cup of coffee. This is Houston. Roger, we'll pass it on. That was Buzz Aldrin giving the report, and Mike Collins uh, chiming in there at the last with the uh, no cup of coffee re report. Uh, 
Call of 11, this is Houston. One minute to LOS Carnarvon. AOS at Honeysuckle, 5 9 or 3 3. Over. Call 11, Roger. Hi, uh, Roger, and we re request you turn up the S band volume for the Honeysuckle Pass. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal at Carnarvon. However, the station at Honeysuckle in Australia will acquire Apollo 11 in approximately uh, a minute. We'll continue to stand by through the Honeysuckle Pass. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston on S-Band. Radio check over. Uh, Roger, Houston. Apollo 11, reach you loud and clear. This is Houston. Uh, Roger, reading you the same. Out. Well, that was Neil Armstrong in the radio check. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, a little over one minute to... LOS at Honeysuckle. Uh, you'll be AOS at Goldstone at 12902. LOS at Goldstone 13355. Over. All right, Bruce. Thank you. We expect TV. We've uh, got it all hooked up. We have not yet turned it on. We're ready to do that now. All right, Roger. We copy. Uh, We'll be configured and uh, waiting for whatever you want to send down. This is Apollo Control at one hour, six minutes into the mission of Apollo 11. Honeysuckle has loss of signal. Mike Collins reported just prior to LOS here that the crew would check out the TV camera at the Goldstone station. Goldstone will acquire Apollo 11 at 1 hour 29 minutes 2 seconds and will lose the state lose the spacecraft at 1 hour 33 minutes 55 seconds. We'll come back up just shortly prior to acquisition at Goldstone. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 1 hour 28 minutes into the mission. We're about 10, 12 seconds away from acquisition at Goldstone, at which time we expect a check out of the color TV camera. We'll then continue live through the United States Pass. That's over. Roger, Houston, read you loud and clear. Roger, reading you the same, uh, coming up on AOS Goldstone. Roger. Cecil B. to Aldrin is standing by for your instructions. Houston, Roger. We have no downlink yet at Goldstone. We're standing. Roger. downlink yet at Goldstone. We're standing by. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, we're not receiving your FM downlink yet. We're standing by. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We're receiving your FM downlink now. We're standing by for TV modulation on the signal. Uh, 
Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston. Radio check over. All right, your loud and clear. Uh, we think we're transmitting uh, to you. Okay, we're not receiving it yet, uh, 11, although we've confirmed the uh, presence of your FM downlink carrier. What switches do you want us to confirm? Stand by. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, you were just on the fringes of coverage from Goldstone. We've uh, just had LOS at Goldstone, and uh, we'd like to push on and uh, get the pad messages read up to you here shortly. All right, Roger. We're ready to copy. Apollo 11, this is Houston. I'm ready with your TLI plus 90 minutes of work pad. Apollo 11, this is Houston. I'm ready with your TLI plus 90 minutes of work pad. Apollo 11 is ready to copy TLI plus 90. Go. All right, your TLI plus 90, SPS GNN, 63481 minus 153 plus Noun 81, minus 04761, plus 00001, plus 53361, roll 180, 193000, HA, is NA plus zero zero two zero three five three five seven three six three three five three three four niner sextant star three three one five seven eight one two two the boresight star is not available. Latitude, minus 0252, minus 02580, 11887-34345, 016-0350, GDC align, Vega and Deneb. Roll zero seven one two nine or one three four one. No ullage. Undocked. And I have your P thirty seven for TLI plus five hours. Over. Go ahead, uh, TLI plus five. All uh, right, your P thirty seven format, TLI plus five. Zero zero. Seven four four six four eight five minus one six five zero two five zero six. Read back over. Uh, Roger, TLI plus ninety, SPS GNN six three four eight one minus one five three plus one three two zero zero four. One zero two five three eight minus zero four seven six one plus zero 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 one plus five three three six one one eight zero one nine three zero 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 not applicable plus zero zero two zero three five three five seven three six three three five three Three four nine three three one five seven eight 
122. Not available. Minus 0252. Minus 11, this is Houston. We're seeing the pitch hot firing, and it looks good. Roger, be advised that we are unable to hear him. Roger, we copy. Uh, have you seen all three exits, sir? Uh, we've seen pitch and yaw. We have not seen roll today. Okay, I'll put in a couple more rolls. Okay, uh, we've got the roll impulses, and uh, you're looking good here. Roger. Uh, Houston Apollo 11, we're standing by for a go for uh, sequence logic on. Roger, uh, Apollo 11, this is Houston. Go ahead, and uh, we'll watch you on TM. Okay, sequence logic, two of them. Sequence logic one and two coming up and on. Paul eleven, this is Houston. You are go for pyro arm. All right, just hang it. Apollo 11, this is Houston. If you give us foo and accept, we have a state factor update for you. Yes, foo and accept. Uh, Roger, probably be another 10 or 15 seconds. We're going to go up through the Vanguard. Uh, when you're ready to copy, I have your TLI pad. Roger, ready to copy, TLI pad. 
Uh, Roger, TLI. Two, three, five, one, four. One, seven, niner. Zero, seven, one. Zero, zero, one. Burn time. Five, four, seven. One, zero, four, three, five, six. Three, five, five, seven, five. Roll for set. Three, five, seven. One, zero, seven. Zero, four, one. Three, zero, one. Two, eight, seven. Three, one, niner. TLI, ten minute abort pitch. Two, two, three. Read back over. Roger. TLI pad. Two, three, five, one, four. One, seven, niner. Zero, seven, one. Zero, zero, one. Five, four, seven. One, zero. Three, five. Five, seven, five. Three, five, seven. One, zero, seven. Zero, four, one. Three, zero, one. Two eight seven three one nine. July ten minute abort pitch two two three. Over. Uh, Apollo eleven, this is Houston. Roger. Would you read back Delta VC Prime again? You were cut out by some noise. Okay. Roger. I'm picking up the squeal here also. To VC one zero four three five six over Apollo eleven. This is Houston. Read back for act out. This is Houston. Uh, we've completed the uplink. The computer is yours. You can go back to block. And uh, would you verify that you have extended the probe over? Roger, that's verified. The probe is extended. Roger, about two minutes to LOS on the stateside pass. AOS Canaries at uh, 15013. Over. Roger, 150. This is Apollo Control. The tracking ship Vanguard has had a loss of signal. However, the Canary Island station will acquire Apollo 11 in less than a minute. We'll continue to stay up live through the Canary station. The ignition time for the translunar injection burn, uh, an elapsed time of 2 hours, 44 minutes, 14 seconds. Duration of the burn expected to be 5 minutes 47 seconds. We're uh, acquiring a Canaries now. We'll stand by. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Over. Roger. Houston, Apollo 11. Loud and clear. Okay, on your... Service module RCS Quad Bravo package temperature. Uh, we're showing it running uh, a little low. It looks like about 20 degrees low, lower than the rest of the quads. Would you confirm that your RCS heater switch for Quad Bravo is in primary? Over. Uh, you're correct. It was uh, not in uh, primary. It was off. It's on now. Thank you. Roger. Thank you. The temperature on that reaction control system quad is coming up to normal now that the heater's on. Apollo 
Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 11, go ahead. Uh, Roger, we checked over the spacecraft and the launch vehicle guidance. Uh, they're both looking to be in good shape. Uh, we estimate you have better than a 99% probability of a guidance cutoff uh, on the launch vehicle. So things are apparently holding in very well. Uh, for your information, Myla received approximately one minute of a usable TV picture. So apparently the system is working. And you're a little over a minute from LOS at Canary. Uh, AOS to Nanareve is two hours, nine minutes, and 18 seconds. Over. Roger. We like those 99 numbers. Thank you. Roger out. This is Apollo Control at one hour, 55 minutes into the mission. Canaries has loss of signal. We were unable to uh, use the uh, one minute of TV time from the Mila station. There is no longer a converter at Mila. The one formerly there has been uh, sent to the Australian station. Tanana Reeve will acquire Apollo 11 on its second orbit of the Earth at 2 hours, 9 minutes, 18 seconds. We expect the translunar injection burn at 2 hours, 44 minutes, 14 seconds. Duration of five minutes forty seven seconds and the delta v or the velocity that we will add to the spacecraft of ten thousand four hundred thirty five point six feet per second we will come back up at uh, to Nanareve acquisition this is mission control houston Standing by through to Nanareve. Nanareve, Houston Convict, Met One. Houston contact, net one.
Got a voice, Houston Comtec, net one. Got a voice, reading you loud and clear. Uh, Roger, we can erase 10 in a reef. Houston Comtec, the man reef. Roger, 10 in a reef. It, are you receiving Capcom's voice, and are you not blinking it? Negative. Uh, Roger. Monitor this. Monitor again, and I'll have Capcom make one more transmission. Roger. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston standing by through to Nanarive. Over. Houston, Apollo 11, right? All right, you're reading you loud and clear. Houston, Roger up. Apollo 11, this is Houston. One minute to LOS to Nunnery, VLS at Carnarvon, 22530. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 2 hours 16 minutes. Tanana Reeve has loss of signal. The Carnarvon station will acquire at 2 hours 25 and a half minutes. Uh, during the Carnarvon pass, uh, the go no go decision will be made for the translunar injection maneuver. That uh, maneuver to occur at about 27 minutes from now near the uh, well the spacecraft is uh, near the Gilbert Islands about halfway between Australia and Hawaii we'll come back up just prior to uh, Carnarvon acquisition this is Mission Control Houston This is Apollo Control at 2 hours 25 minutes, and Carnarvon has acquired Apollo 11. At uh, LOS here at Carnarvon, we will have uh, several Arias Apollo range instrument, instrumented aircraft in the area between uh, LOS, Carnarvon, and uh, acquisition at the tracking ship Redstone, so we may have the capability of of continuous uh, communications between now and the TLI burn. We'll stand by through Carnarvon. Apollo 11, this is Houston uh, through Carnarvon. Radio check, over. Roger, Houston through Carnarvon, Apollo 11, loud and clear. All right, Roger, you're coming in uh, very loud and very clear here. Up. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go for TLI. Over. Apollo 11, thank you. Roger out.
Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Houston 11. Uh, Roger, we'll be coming within uh, range of the Araya aircraft coverage here in about one minute. Uh, they're going to uh, try uplinking uh, both on S-band and on VHF this time, so uh, if you turn your, make sure your S-band volume is turned up, uh, we appreciate it. And we believe that we'll have continuous coverage uh, from now on through the TLI burn, over. Oh, very good. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston through Araya 4. Radio check over. We can leave into uh, Tank 4 and uh, all of the uh, Roger, we're reading you Strength 5, uh, readability of uh, 3. Uh, should be quite adequate. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, we're reading you uh, readability about three, strength five. Uh, sounds pretty good. Over. All right, so we've got a little static in the background now. This is Apollo Control. We're 10 minutes away from ignition on translunar injection. We want to add uh, 10,435 feet per second to the spacecraft's velocity. Looking for a total velocity at the end of this burn, about 35,575 feet per second. Apollo 11, uh, this is Houston through Araya 3, radio check over. Roger, Houston, uh, Apollo 11, you're much clearer and uh, adequately loud, isn't it? Uh, Roger, 11, you're coming in uh, 5 by 5 here, beautiful signal. Uh, it's a lot better than that static we had uh, previously. Okay. And we got the time to six indications on time. Roger, Houston. Roger out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, we just got telemetry back on your booster, and it's looking good. Houston, Roger out. It's Apollo Control. We're two minutes from ignition now. Showing present altitude about 108 nautical miles. We expect to be at an altitude of 177 nautical miles at cutoff. Present velocity 25,560 feet per second. And we're a minute from ignition. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh Slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go. Roger. Ignition. We 
confirm ignition and the thrust is go. Guidance looking good. Velocity 26,000 feet per second. Follow 11, this is Houston at one minute. Trajectory and guidance look good, and the stage is good. Over. Coming up on 27,000 feet per second. and radar tracking both solid velocity 27,800 feet per second Apollo 11 this is Houston thrust is good everything's still looking good We're two and a half minutes into this burn. Still have another three minutes to go. And the velocity exceeds 29,000 feet per second, building up toward 30,000 feet per second. Present altitude 115 nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston, uh, around three and a half minutes. You're still looking good. Your predicted cutoff is right on the nominal. Factor Apollo 11, let's go. 31,200 feet per second now. Altitude 125 nautical miles. Velocity 32,000 feet per second, altitude 130 miles. One minute left to burn. Velocity is 33,000 feet per second, altitude 142 and a half nautical miles.
Velocity is 33,000 feet per second. Altitude 142 and a half nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at five minutes. Roger, we're go. Thirty-four thousand feet per second now, altitude one hundred fifty-two. Thirty-five thousand feet per second. Velocity 35,570 feet per second, altitude 177 nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We show, show cutoff and uh, we copy the numbers and now in 62. This is Houston. Uh, do you read over? Roger, Houston. Apollo 11. Uh, we are reading the VI of 35579er. And the EMS was uh, plus 3.3. Over. Roger, plus 3.3 .3 on the EMS. And uh, we copy the VI. transient at staging of any significance over? That's right. It was all uh, all a good ride. Houston, roger out. Houston, for your information, we expect the maneuver to separation attitude to begin at uh, 3 plus 0, 05 plus 0, 03 and to be completed at uh, plus 0, 09 plus 20. Uh, separation at 3 plus 1, 5 plus 0, 0. Roger. Time to begin maneuver is uh, 30503. Complete. 30920 and separation 3 plus 1500. Zero, zero. Uh, Roger, that separation should be 3 plus 1503, Meyer, and reading up. Roger. Uh, this 
is at Apollo Control, the velocity falling off now. Immediately after shutdown, we're showing 34,000 uh, feet per second now, but the altitude uh, building, 512 nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston. All the booster functions are proceeding normally. The sequencing is in good shape, and it doesn't look like they're having any problems at all. Over. Roger. into the mission. Velocity now 31,214 feet per second. Apollo 11's distance from Earth 1,245 nautical miles. Houston. Our preliminary data indicates a good cutoff on the S-4B. Uh, we'll have some more trajectory data for you in about half an hour. Over. This is Apollo Control. The S-4B has started its maneuvering to the separation attitude. Seven minutes. The velocity is 27,945 feet per second. Distance from Earth, 2,384 nautical miles. Houston, over. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston, over.
At 3 hours 11 minutes into the mission, velocity 26,314 feet per second. Distance from Earth, 3,140 nautical miles. S4B is reported in a stable attitude for this separation. Rates are less than one tenth of a foot per second in all axes. Saturn launch control, T minus two hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. At this time, the prime crew for Apollo 11 has boarded the high speed elevator from inside the A level in the mobile launcher, which is the second level inside the launcher. This is a high speed elevator, 600 feet per minute, which will carry them to the 320 foot level, uh, the spacecraft level. Uh, shortly, uh, we'll expect astronauts Neil Armstrong and Michael Collins to come across swing arm nine, the Apollo access arm, and proceed to the white room and uh, stand by to board the spacecraft. The third member of the crew, astronaut Edwin Aldrin, who will be the last one to board the spacecraft, will stand by in the elevator, seated in a chair, while his two comrades first board the spacecraft. Once uh, Armstrong, who sits in the left-hand seat, and Collins, who will sit in the right-hand seat uh, during liftoff, are aboard. Then Aldrin will be called, and he will uh, take his seat, the middle seat, in the spacecraft. The spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and the command module pilot, Michael Collins, now proceeding across the swing arm into the small white room that attaches at the spacecraft uh, level. In the meantime, about 100 feet below, we have a technician, a uh, team of technicians working on a uh, leaking valve, which is a part of the ground support equipment, a part of the system that's used to replenish the fuel supply for the third stage of the Saturn V rocket. He is uh, proceeding to tighten a series of bolts around this valve in the hope that this will correct the leak. Once the technicians do depart, the uh, uh, hydrogen will again be flowed through the system to assure that the leak has been corrected. The uh, spacecraft commander, Neil Armstrong, and CMP, the command module pilot, Mike Collins, now standing by in the White Room. T-minus two hours, 38 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is launch control. Apollo Saturn launch control, T-minus two hours, 34 minutes, 44 seconds, and counting. The spacecraft commander, Neil...